Well, welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And so we started uh, yesterday talking about the Word of God as seed. We did read the account in Mark chapter 4. We read it in Mark chapter 4, Amplified, and we read it in Luke chapter 8 uh, in, the New King, in the New King James, and of course initially Mark 4 in the New King James as well. And we did get to mention just briefly, we saw that the people in the wayside, you know, they hear the word, um, they receive it, they go home, and people come down on them, and you didn't, and what, you attended that charismatic meeting? What do you mean, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost? And of course, the, the word was taken out of their hearts right away. But then in verse 13, we talked about the ones uh, on the um, rock. They hear, they get all happy about it, but then you don't see them come back to the meetings anymore where you can continue to water the word and continue to plant, you know, and, you know, and have the word grow. And maybe they'll come back, maybe they won't, but they believe just for a short time. And then the temptations of the world come and they fall away, they go back into the world. All right, that's where we left off. But now in verse 14, here we see a third kind of a human spirit. And that is one like this. Now the ones that fell among thorns are those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. So let's see if we can pick it up here in, in Mark chapter 4 in the Amplified Bible. And the ones sown among the thorns are others who hear the word. Then the cares and anxieties and worries of the world and distractions of the age and the pleasure and delight and false glamour and deceitfulness of riches and the cravings and the passion and desire for other things creep in and choke and suffocate the word and it becomes fruitless or, un, or unfruitful. And so here we have, we have uh, people who are born again. I've seen too much of it. Don't like to see any more. Where they're doing really good with the Lord. You know, living a holy life and walking by faith and, and all of this. But then after a while, they start taking on, well, you know, it wouldn't hurt to, to have a million dollars in the bank. And then they, got, they start focusing on money instead of God. And, uh, or the cares of the world. You know, they don't obey the word and roll all of their cares and over anxieties over on him for he careth for you. Uh, we're, it's a sin for us to worry and be anxious. We're to trust God. But they take on the cares. Then they start worrying. Are we going to have enough for this? Are we going to have enough for that? And all of that, instead of just saying, hey, I thank you, Lord, you meet my every need through the new blood covenant. And the pleasures of life. You know, all of a sudden, for some reason, you know, church is boring. The world's more exciting, of course. They get high on drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. And then, of course, there's at least sex involved. And, and you got all of these parties you go to and then and, and, and end up throwing up all over the place the next morning, hungover, and calling that the pleasures of life. <laughs> more exciting than God. And they bring no fruit to maturity. They end up falling away, really. And that's another subject which we'll probably get on in the future. And so here, they started out good, but then all these thorns, they were the ones that fell among thorns, and those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, the pleasures of the world. And see, when we get born again, I think most people should, that should be explained to them. There are only two kinds, in one sense, there's only two kinds of people. Those who are lost, they're not born again, they have the nature of sin and death, Satan's nature. Then there's the other group of people who have asked Jesus to come into their hearts. They're born again. They take on the life of God and God, and they, and God comes and lives inside of them. Now, when you become a, before you become a Christian, you're sold out for the world. You just do everything the world does, everything, the, and the devil's the head of the world system. So you, you're in sin you, you, it's, and, and you're enjoying it. But you know some, there's more to life than that. So you end up at some place where someone shares the gospel with you. And so you ask Jesus to come into your heart to, to be your Lord and your master. Now, what you need to understand that when you receive Jesus as your Lord and master, that means you turn your back on the devil. You don't need the devil anymore to entertain you or to meet your need. And there's separation. You turn your back on the world. Now we're in this world, but we're not of this world. 
You're in this world. You have a job in this world. You go to work every day and all of that. But the world is not in you. You have no desire for the sinful, lustful desires of the world or being entertained by somebody else's sin on uh, movies or what have you. You separate yourself from the world and you separate yourself unto God. Now, before you ask Jesus into your heart, you had separated yourself from God and you went all out for the devil and the world. But now you turn it around 180 degrees. And if you don't do that, then you'll end up like this group right here. They, they, they've heard the word, but then after a while, they, they, they take on the cares of the world, the riches and the pleasures of life. And of course, they don't bring any fruit to maturity. They end up really falling away from God. Now, these are Christians. They started out well, but then they started slacking off, not reading the Bible like they should, not praying like they should, not going to church like they should. And so gradually, the word becomes less and less in their life and the world becomes more and more. And eventually, and so the thorns choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. The thorns being cares, anxieties, worries, riches, pleasures of life, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. I'm going back here. Let's see. That is the um, amplified, but I was just going to pick it up here in, in Luke and see how it's worded here. In, in Luke chapter 4, and it says, uh, now that's the stony ground. Whoop, coming down here, he explains it. And they, uh, and likewise, uh, let's see. Now, these are the ones who are sown among thorns. They're the ones who hear the word. And the cares of this world, the deceitful of the riches, and the desire for other things enter in and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. All right, so then, we finally come to the fourth uh, category, if you will, of, uh, of Christians. And uh, that takes us right on down to uh, verse uh, 15. I'll do it in Luke eight fifteen. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and a good heart. See, here we have a good heart. We've had other hearts choked with thorns and things like that. But this is a good heart. They keep it and bear fruit with patience or perseverance. And I don't know, and I'll just pick it up again here in Luke chapter 4 and pick it up down here in verse 19, or verse 20 rather. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, bear fruit, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. Now the good ground are people who have gotten born again, filled with the Spirit, and they're living a life of separation. In other words, they're, they're in the world, but the world's not in them. They have no desire for the things of the world, and they're living a holy life. And they're, a holy life just means uh, um, a living, uh, well, righteousness kind of explains that. Righteousness leads to holiness. There's two kinds of righteousness. One is when you get born again. Now you have, that has to do with your position with God. Before you were born again, you had no position with God. You, were, you, you belonged to the devil. Now you're taken from the bar of darkness and transferred from the kingdom of the Son of your love, and you have a position with God. And then it also means doing what's right. So to live a righteous life means doing what's right. To live a holy life just simply means living according to God's way. How does God, what does God tell us to do? And we live according to God's way. That's wisdom. And of course, if we do it God's way, that's holiness and then the devil can't touch us and that's a good heart that stays true to god and loves god and is and and is faithful to god loyal to god and is obedient to god's word that's a good heart glory to god all right so we have defined then these four different kinds of hearts and um so we could say in summary there are five ways Satan uses to take away the word or choke the word. That's persecutions, afflictions, or tribulations. That also could mean suffering or distress. So persecutions, afflictions, or tribulations. The cares of this world will choke God's word if you allow it in your heart. The deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. All right, our time is up again. Praise the Lord. Well, you'll be blessed until the next time that we get together. And uh, we'll look forward to that.